Okay, video number 15 in the Schneider Modicon TM3 expansion module series. We're going to take a look at wiring analog voltage outputs using a 0 to 10 volt or a minus 10 to plus 10 on a TM3 expansion module. So specifically, we're going to be dealing with the AQ2 module over here. It's going to be an analog output that has two output points off of it. There is a larger one, the AQ4, that is going to go and follow the exact same format as well. So whichever one you are utilizing, um, you can follow through this video and you can just scale up what we're doing on your AQ4. Looking at the manufacturer's data sheet, they show us the range of modicons we can use it with, 221, 241, 251, and 262. And then they give us a little bit of information on the voltages and the currents that are going to be available as output. We can do either or current or voltage. This video is going to be focused around voltage, so 0 to 10 volt or minus 10 to plus 10 volts out that we're going to go and use. And then looking a little bit further in, we find out a little bit of information about the accuracy or the resolution that we are going to go and have. It's going to be 12 volts, or sorry, not 12 volts, 12 bits of accuracy. So 11 bits plus a sign that we are going to go and have onto it, plus or minus. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more coarse than what we can get on the input. Inputs are going to range up to 16 bits. Uh, these are going to be a slight bit coarser because we're applying that output. Looking at our values of voltage that we can go and apply out, we also see that our least significant bits or the smallest amount of change we can affect is going to be 2.44 millivolts on the 0 to 10 volt scale or 4.88 millivolts on the minus 10 to plus 10 scale that we are going to go and have. Stabilization time is going to take us a millisecond to go and reach values. Once we uh, tell it that we need to have values, it's going to take it a uh, millisecond. Conversion time is going to be how long it's going to take us to go and make the stabilization plus add in the number of channels. So if we got two inputs, it's going to be two channel plus the controller cycle time. So in other words, the amount of time it takes for us to go and make a change in our program and then see it affected in the real world is going to be the milliseconds of the actual change the milliseconds for other channels for it to do a scan, plus whatever your cycle time is going to be. So it's really dependent of mostly upon how streamlined your code is and how fast your CPU is going to be different. You know, CPUs are going to have different controller cycle times as a default. The next little bit of here, the data sheet just deals with accuracies and percentages that we are going to go and have. We see that there will be an output ripple of up to 20 millivolts. So as much as we're trying to maintain a very, very constant, you know, um, five volts or wherever you're setting this thing at, there is going to always be a little bit of ripple, but they're guaranteeing us it's never going to be more than 20 millivolts that we are going to go and have off of it. This section over here deals with the power that we need to apply to the card, 24 volts to the card itself that can go no higher than 28.8, no lower than 24 or 20.4. And this is the power that we're going to take in. We're going to run it then through an actual volt put out, a voltage output to get our signal. Looking at the wiring for these cards, we do see that we need an external power supply. So this 24 volt power supply over here is going to get run through a fuse in like that. We're going to run the negative in as well. And we're also going to go and ground the card. So this is going to provide the power that my controller is then going to be able to go and provide a signal out with. So it's going to convert that, chop it down, and we're going to be able to get our 0 to 10 volt or plus or minus 10 volts out of it. You will note that we see this protective earth here that we're seeing that's a shielded cable that we're running on our output positive goes to the plus negative goes to the negative really straightforward for that fusing that we're going to see we're going to bounce something onto our din rail itself you can either go with a class cc fuse holder using hclr which are going to be extremely fast acting style or you can go with one of these glass or ceramic schneider does recommend the use of t style which are extremely fast acting however they can be difficult to source and they can be difficult to find fuse holders for so do apply some fusing to it uh, the best you know that you have but also what's readily available because if you take an obscure type of fuse that's not easily you know found for replacements your customer is going to end up you know cutting that out and replacing it with something that they want of their own and it could be way worse all right looking at my wiring for this one we see that we have got ac coming in going through a 10 amp din rail mounted circuit breaker that ac feeds into a dc power supply that dc power supply converts us to 24 volts which we use to feed our plc as well as 24 volts that we feed along to this 
fuse holder over here, which we're going to use to go and power up our card. Taking a closer look at the PLC and card over here, we do see it's an M251 PLC. We've applied the TM3 AQ2 onto it. We see the terminal designations, 24 zero volt and protective earth as shown on the manufacturer's data sheet. We see our positive and negative for output zero and for output number one. And then we also have these NCs, which are gonna be our not connected or unused uh, screws that are gonna be off here. Don't bring anything into them, just leave them isolated as is. Over here, we take a look at our cable. We're running zero to 10 volt to a field device. We're using a shielded cable. We've got a positive negative. We've got a ground the cable. We have got a shield on the outside of the cable as well. So we are going to go and ground the shield down at the source end and we will isolate it out at the field end. Okay, let's apply that wiring onto here. Let's start by doing some grounding and bonding. We're gonna take this shield in, we're gonna apply it into our ground. We're gonna take our ground for this cable as well, which is different than the shield. The shield drains off charge and prevents you know, uh, electromagnetic induction and things like that. The ground is gonna be the ground that actually runs inside of the cable itself. Both of them go into this ground. And while we're dealing with the grounding and bonding, we are also gonna go and pick up the ground on the card itself. Then we're going to go and apply power to the car. We're going to go and take a positive in to my 24 volts. And then we are going to go and take a negative in to my zero volts. So zooming in off of this one over here, you can see your power that has been applied to the actual card itself. All right, we'll go out a little bit further here just because I can't draw when it's zoomed in. Um, we take a look at our positive and our negative that we are going to go and have on this cable that's going out to my field devices we're going to go and take a positive to one of my positives so we'll pick q1 over here because it's conveniently close and then we're going to take our negative to q1 negative and zooming in one more time off of this over here we can take a look we got our 0 to 10 volt we've got our ground over here and we see that we are taking the positive out on the red, the negative out on the black and we're applying power to the cart that's it that's as simple as these cards are